Hi, welcome back. This is Robert Strickland. This is the fifth of five series of a series of five lessons on how to design a checkerboard cushion rectangle with GEMCAD for Windows, a computer-aided design program for faceted gemstones. Okay, in the previous lesson we finished our design for a length to width ratio of 1.2 to one. Now we're going to stretch this aspect ratio. We're going to try to make one that's a little closer to 1.4 to 1. So I'm going to, let's zoom in to the top view here just so we can see better what's going on. I'm going to do edit, scale, and uh, we're going to stretch. We want a 1.4 and we have a 1.202, so we need to multiply the y-axis, so we got the y checked, by the old aspect ratio is 1.202. And I got that from this box down here. And now we're going to divide by the new aspect ratio, which is 1.4. We'll click on OK. Let's see what we got. That looks great. Uh, Jimcat is telling us that the indexes aren't, uh, they need to be rounded to the nearest notches. So let's see if we Jimcat can do that. So we'll click, say yes. Uh, oh, Jimcat's telling me the index gear, common index gears from best to worst. And it says 88 is the best. I don't have one. 120 is the next. Um, I don't really like to use 120 because the teeth are too close together. Uh, 96 is only slightly worse, so let's use 96. Sometimes the facets will just line up with different index gears whenever you do this process, depending on the length to width ratio, and it, it's different for every length to width ratio. We're going to use 96 gear in the standard orientation. Uh oh, you can see that now my lines that used to be straight are all crooked. So the scale command was not successful in rounding off the indexes to index uh, to a whole number index numbers and that's pretty typical checkerboards are really hard to scale that way so we're going to use a the different technique and the technique we're going to use is essentially the same as the technique we use to turn the cushions the square cushion that we designed in lesson one into the rectangular cushion lesson two so we're going to offset the stone in, on the, and um, we're going to offset it. We're going to scoot it up in the top view. So I'm going to put pick a point for the new center somewhere along this edge. I don't know quite where yet. I'm doing this by trial and error. I've done it a few times, so I remember it's somewhere around in here. <laughs> So we're going to use to cut, click use to cut. Now we aren't using that to cut really, but we're using it just to save that point for our edit center command. And that point now, we're going to click use point one info. That's going to become our new dop axis. So we're going to center the y axis about that point. Click OK. So now we've scooched the stone over our new center is right here. Okay, now conceptually what we're going to do is we're going to saw out, saw the stone on its center line and also saw it up here and then glue the two pieces back together. So I'm going to reflect the bottom half of the stone. Edit, reflect the y-axis. Okay, we've got a length to width ratio of 1.424. That's slightly skinnier than we wanted, but that's okay because we need to recut our facets to... Now we have squares here and rectangles here. We want equal sized rectangles. Uh, I'm gonna... Let's see if we can... What I'd like to use is the same technique where we entered a point here and here and used Jimcad's point on edge command to, to pick that point. However, those two points are not on the same, this point and this point do not lie on the same edge. So that technique will not work for setting that point. Um, 
there's various ways of doing it. I'm going to try uncutting and recutting facet K. If I uncut K, we can see that there's still this intervening edge that's in the way. So what I want to do is uh, undo that. I'm going to delete facet K. We're going to make a note of its angle. Its angle is 8 degrees. That's what we set it to when we tangent ratio scaled the crown. So I'm going to delete that tier and we'll cut it again. You know, I forgot to do something very important here. I didn't reflect it or else I've thrown a, I've hit undo too many times. So let's do redo a couple of times. That's fine. That's, that's where I want to be. And now I'm going to uncut recut facet J. Okay, so now I have an edge here that I can bisect. So I'm going to click on the edge. Okay, I forgot to do something very important again. I uh, did not save the angle of facet J. So let's do undo, which I just did. And um, I'm going to put the cursor inside of facet J, click in the facet, and let's copy its angle. 11.24 degrees plus some change. And then we're going to uncut recut. And now we're going to bisect this edge. So I'm going to click on the edge and using the same technique I'm going to type in 0 0.5 for the new angle, for the new fraction of edge length. That'll bisect that line. Give me a point halfway in between. So now I'm ready to recut facet J. And now these widths are equal. Now I can recut K. So I'll click in the on that point where I want it to meet and we'll give it an angle of 8 degrees which is what I wrote down on the scratch pad and its index is at 96. So there's facet K we need to get its label back so I'll just give it a new name K and apply that. Okay now we need to recut H. We need to recut H until it meets this point. So I'm going to give it this meet point used cut Put the cursor inside facet H, copy its angle, uncut, recut, and now we're going to cut it. So we've done H, now we need to do the same thing to D. I want it to meet, uh, let's do it over here so the label's not in the way. We'll do this side. Um, meet this point, used to cut, put the cursor inside this other D facet. Now you'll notice whenever I do that, uh, this index is 74 instead of 22 or whatever it was on the other side. Uh, whenever you give Jimcat a point and an index, those need to align, they need to be on the same facet. So by clicking and copying, we're assured of doing that without getting too lost. Cut it deeper. Okay, now we have our girdle facet to do. So I'm going to put the cursor just outside the perimeter of the stone to select that girdle facet. Click, copy its angle, which we know is 90 degrees. And I'm going to uncut, recut. That copies its index 22 in the new facet info box. And we need a point. And the point we need is this meet point right here. So now we're going to cut that girdle deeper. Hey, we did well. We were aiming for 1.4 and we got 1.403 for our length to width ratio. Let's see what we did. So that completes our crown. We got 1.4 aspect ratio, close enough. And uh, let's see what we did to the pavilion of the stone. Okay, our Omni preform is been totally obliterated. <laughs> Our Omni design is, is it's no longer an Omni. Um, there's several ways to redo this Omni preform. Let me see if I can quickly do that here. Um, I think I'll just leave that as an exercise for you guys. Uh, basically what you'll have to do is delete all of the facets on the pavilion of the stone, 
cut that temporary crown, just repeat what we did in lesson two. Your indexing is going to be different on the Omni facets. Uh, Omni Pavilion may not be the best thing for this long skinny stone, the 1.4 length to width ratio. Okay, so that completes uh, lesson five. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some things about GemCat and shoot me some comments or send me an email on YouTube or send me an email. My email is on my website www.gemcad.com. Thanks for watching.